This is group number three, which is formed by Mylene Mauro, Eugenia Arevalo, Alejandra Insaurralde, Matias Perez Rubio, and me, Florencia Rodriguez. In this particular occasion, we are going to deal with uh, language skills, um, listening in this case. And to begin with, it can be said that according to Lynch and Mendelssohn, um, when listening, we make sense of a spoken um, language uh, that generally is accompanied by other sounds and visual input. Furthermore, we put into play um, our prior knowledge about the world and the context in which we are listening. Therefore, it can be said that listening is a complex and active process. What is more, listening cannot be uh, regarded as an auditory version of reading since it has its own distinctive features uh, such as um, being ephemeral. Uh, also, it has a rich prosody uh, as, regard, as regards um, stress, intonation, um, rhythm, loudness, and many more. Um, also, it possesses characteristics of natural fast speech. And it is when, when listening, it is necessary to process the information and to respond almost immediately. Um, besides, um, throughout history, there has been a lot of uh, models of listening, and I'm going to name uh, four. The first one is communication um, theory model. And this model is aimed uh, to make communicate, uh, telecommunication systems more competent and efficient. And in this way, human participation was thought to be uh, secondary in this process of communication. Uh, the second one is information processing model. Uh, and this model was shaped by research in computing and artificial intelligence. And Due to the fact that humans were thought to be limited processors when dealing with a complex tasks, um, this model says that one has to pay more attention to uh, one aspect of the task and pay less attention to the other. Um, in the third place, we have social contextual model uh, and in here, listening is believed to, to be a cognitive process where humans are the participants and creators of meanings since, well, meaning is created in an interactional space. Um, but still, uh, human participation is relatively um, limited. And in the fourth place, we have situated action model. And well, this model is influenced by psychologists uh, who consider that humans spend most of their time trying to understand information so as to carry out tasks, uh, which uh, is um, very different from what uh, information processing models say about um, human only processing information and storing this information uh, in their memory. And therefore human participation is active. So if we think about the pedagogical implications uh, of this part, uh, we can say that uh, it is important for us teachers to understand that listening is an active and complex uh, process that needs practice. Uh, and so, um, it is important for us to guide our students, uh, for them to become successful listeners. Um, and in this case, bearing in mind um, all these listening models, um, it can be said that it is important to not consider them as exclusive because a successful listener 
is the one that uses all these models in a combination. Um, and therefore, in order to solve different listening tasks successfully, uh, students need to make use of the distinctive elements provided by all the comprehension uh, models available. And it is our task to make them uh, aware of this fact. Hello everyone, my name is Mylene Maurer and I'm going to be speaking about two different types of listening. So we can talk about one-way listening, uh, which is related to the transactional function of the language. That is to say, it's concerned with the transferring of information and it takes place when we are listening in order to learn, such as in most academic settings. Some of its main features are the, the density of the cognitive content, also the rather formal language, and the need to do something with what has been heard. As for two-way listening, we can say that this one is related to the interactional function of the language, that is to say, with doing, uh, with doing things with the language for the maintenance of social relations. So here, dialogue and discussion uh, are involved and the listeners are required to uh, to make contributions in real time. That is to say, they have they have limited time to process what is being heard, and this may lead to misinterpretations. But they also have the chance to to clear their doubts straight away and to resolve problems. So here in this two-way listening, we can find a four major speak a four major listeners role. They can be acting as participants, and here they have the same rights as the other speaker. They can be acting as addressee, in which they have limited speaking rights. They can be acting as auditors, in which they are being spoken to but have no right to speak. Or they can be acting as overhearer, in which they are not being spoken to and have no right to speak. And now we should move forward to our, to our second topic, let's say. And so it can be said that a competent speaker makes use of two processes that we are familiar with already, the one of top down and bottom up. So in this following section, we are going to discuss them briefly and we are going to provide examples of activities um, that can be carried out in our EFL classrooms. So we can say that bottom-up process is related to uh, putting one by one the pieces of what is being heard in a linear fashion in sequence, so as to form the complete message. Um, it is believed that the speakers first concentrate on the, the concentrate, or not concentrate, but the, the discriminates, there you have it, discriminates between individual sounds of, of phonemes, and then they discriminate morphemes, and then words, and then phrases, and so on and so forth. So here the focus is on, on form and structure. So with bottom-up activities, we can lead our students to focus on, to focus on um, particular parts of the message instead of the overall meaning. So we can hit, we can make them concentrate on morphemes, sounds, uh, or individual words. So uh, we brought, we brought uh, two different examples of these uh, bottom-up activities. So in the first one, they are supposed to listen to this Bruno Mars song. <laughs> And while they are listening to it, they have to circle the correct option. They have to circle the word they hear, and at the same time, they have to concentrate on the morphemes, uh, on the final s or es of the word or the lack of it. So our in our next activity again, we have a song, a beautiful song by Elton John. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside, I'm not one of those. Okay, and while our students are listening to this song, they are asked to listen to it carefully and to complete with the missing words. So they need to focus on individual words instead again of the overall message. <laughs> 
Okay, sorry. And as for top down, as for top down process, we can say that it is believed in this process that the listener goes from the whole to the part. That is to say, that he or she is concerned with the interpretation of the overall meaning of the message rather than um, rather than uh, with the recognition of individual sounds, words, phrases, uh, etc. So when using this process, the listeners make hypotheses. So they activate their schemas, that is to say, the prior knowledge and the experiences on their memories so as to, uh, so as to um, make sense of what is being heard. So we can say that here the listener relies on his or her knowledge about the world so as to achieve comprehension. So in our classroom, we can include uh, these top-down activities uh, so as to help them focus on the on, on deriving on the deriving message, on the derived message, global understanding, and uh, general interpretation. So we can get them we can get them to recognize the topic, such as in the following activity in which our students are supposed to listen to a conversation and decide. Uh, the place in which it, it occurs. So uh, they, need to, they need to circle the correct option, but we're going to provide them with pictures that represent uh, the correct option instead of individual words. And then in this second activity, our students, again, are supposed to listen to a conversation or are supposed to listen to a story and decide what the main topic is. And so they have to choose uh, through a picture what is the main topic that is taking place. Hello, everyone. I will talk about listening skills and listening strategies. Listening is an important skill which enables language learners to receive and interact with language input and facilitates the emergence of other language skills. Although it is common to speak to the four language skills, it is obvious that each of them consists of a huge number of sub skills, each of which has a different value and significance depending on the context. So here is a step by step approach to creating a set of fast listening activities that can help improve listening skills, like reading each sub skill may be trained independently, and after the sub-skills have been mastered, they will be integrated and applied to longer listening materials, similar to how reading is done. Um, any sub-skill used, whether alone or in combination, should be acceptable for the type of the content. content. These sub-skills are enabling skills which are those used to comprehend what the speaker is saying and interpret what they mean. For example, predicting what people are going to talk about, guessing at unknown words or phrases, uh, using one's own knowledge of the subject to help one understand, identifying relevant points, recognizing discourse markers, understanding different intonation patterns and uses of stress. Enacting skills are those used to respond properly to the message, making an appropriate response, including selected points for the current task, transcoding information into written form, for example, notes, identifying which points need clarification, and integrating information with that from other sources, providing appropriate feedback to the speaker. As uh, listening strategies, what are listening strategies? Well, they are techniques or activities that contribute to comprehension and regard to, regard to listening input. It is essential for language teachers to help our students become effective, active listeners 
by modeling listening strategies and providing active listening practice. They are divided into metacognitive, cognitive, and social affective. Cognitive techniques integrate learners' prior knowledge to understand text meaning and more in interaction with the text, including the ability to ignore irrelevant information. Um, metacognitive strategies refers to the ability to reflect on and manage on learning and, and are considered the most reliable predictors of listening skills development in metacognition. Social and affective strategies are closely linked. Individual feeling and social interactions are integrated in the second language, language learning process. As my classmate mentioned before, top-down strategies include activities like listening for the main idea, predicting, drawing inferences, summarizing. Um, Bottom-up strategies include listening for specific um, details, recognizing cognates, recognizing words or their phrase, patterns, sorry. Metacognitive listening strategies include planning, monitoring, evaluating the process of teaching, listening. And according to research on social activity, Affective ability learners are often intimidated from asking questions during the listening process due to a lack of social compassion in the classroom. It also demonstrates how social affective strategies can help learners in staying motivated and focused, as well as controlling emotion, communicating with others, and receiving help from others. As regarding pedagogical implication, the role of the teacher is of great importance that requires us to provide knowledge and understanding of the listening process to help our students acquire the foreign language. It is also important to bear in mind the use of strategies when giving instructions, the selection of the text to be used genres in developing appropriate mental and emotional responses to the activity, as well as the use of visual support for contextualizing. Okay, my name is Eugenia Arevalo, and I'm going to talk about how we gain insight into listening. So, in order to gain knowledge about the listening skill, we can observe and analyze different settings. The authors proposed experiments. Investigations that involve carrying out experiments can provide useful information about listening. They usually focus on aspects that can be measured, for example, the effects of prosody on speech recognition, and from experiments, we know that the distinctive patterns of speech from our L1 influence the way we process L2 speech. For instance, some languages use syllable patterns, whereas others use stress patterns. This unconscious habit can cause problems to listeners. Experimental approaches can also assess other features, such as the speed of speaking, the position and frequency of pauses. And then we have pedagogic tasks. Some interesting findings from pedagogic tasks are the beneficial effects on L2 comprehension of content redundancy, pausing, signposting, and visual support. Studies carried out in foreign language classrooms emphasize the complexity for the listener of having to enact a response having to contribute relevantly and coherently at an average point in the discourse. Then we have test performances. Researchers who have access to candidates' performances in listening in worldwide tests 
such as IELTS and TOEFL, investigated listening skills on a very large scale. For example, the author mentioned Sui and Fulila, who studied test results from 150,000 Chinese learners of English. And they analyzed how bottom-up processing makes some listeners more successful than others. And in last place, we have the ethnographic research. It involves real life listening behavior, such as misunderstandings in conversations. This information can provide rich data for analysis. One context in which misunderstandings are common is the daily life of immigrant or migrant workers. In some cases, the misunderstandings are, are uh, they occur because of linguistic causes, but in most cases, the origin is non-shared expectations of members of different countries. Apart from the settings, there are other ways in which we can gain insights into listening. These are the different methods by which listeners achieve understanding. For example, the first one that the author mentions is observation. Observation can take many forms, from informal noticing of misunderstandings to experiments designed to create ambiguities and referential conflicts. However, it is not possible to know with certainty the cause of the listener's doubts or their mental model only by observation. This is why we have more methods. The second method is introspection. This method involves comments by the listener at the time of the listening or immediately afterwards. This is also known as the think aloud protocol. There are three main criticisms to this method. First, it is too demanding to make a report as you listen. Second, the data may be influenced by the listener's skills in verbalizing mental processes. And third, listeners' reports may reflect prior knowledge rather than their listening. So the last method is retrospection. In this method, the listeners uh, are asked to recall the experience of comprehending sometime later. And they usually have a memory support such as a recording. These three methods are not exclusive. They should be applied in combination in order to achieve the best results. So now we are going to talk about the teaching implications and because gaining insight into listening is very useful to improve our students' listening skills. Yes. What we can do as teachers is uh, to um, choose the appropriate tasks to help our students succeed in the listening skill. And we can carry out our own research with our own students using experimental investigations, different pedagogic tasks, and test performances. We teachers must gather data and analyze it in order to find our students' weaknesses and strengths and then we can help them become aware of the possible strategies that they can apply to improve their listening skills. All right, hello everybody. Now I'm going to talk about uh, from theory to practice problems in L2 listening teaching. So the first thing that I will mention will be the difficulty factors in listening. So it was shown that in a situation in which the materials used to teach listening were often unsuitable and the task assigned after listening were inappropriate for the text or for the particular needs of the learners in question. Uh, research over the past number of years has attempted to define which factors contribute to making a particular listening pass it difficult or easy to comprehend. Now on our right, we have um, a list of input characteristics. The first one is language that we can mention, for example, unfamiliar accent, or we can talk about complex pronoun reference. And then we have explicitness. Um, for example, we can mention lack of redundancy. 
then organization the is the example preceding the what they illustrate and then the content for example we can say shifting relationships between protagonists um, the context that is about lack of visual or other support and then in the following slide Now we're going to talk about authenticity of text and task, the strategy, instruction, and skills training. The first one is authenticity of text uh, and task. So authentic in this context is generally defined as not designed or recorded for non-native speakers or for language learning purposes. Uh, within some proposed a separation of two different aspects of language. Uh, for example, the first one is genuineness, and then the second one is authenticity. He argued that a text was genuine if it contained the sort of language typical, let's say, of that genre in actual use, and that it did not matter uh, for learners or teachers whether it had occurred in real communication. In other words, genuineness was related to text. Uh, authenticity was related to task. Um, a test could therefore be genuine, even if it had been invented for teaching purposes rather than discovered in actual, uh, actual use. The second one is a strategy instruction. Um, let's say that is the root of teaching learners how to tackle a listening text. It involves showing learners the clues uh, to get in at meeting when gaps uh, in their competence, for example, um, that it is difficult for them. Then Mendelssohn, as part of his strategy-based approach, offers examples of strategies uh, to determine setting, interpersonal relationships, uh, mood, and topic, arguing that this facilitates comprehension. Setting relates to where and when, for example, interpersonal uh, relations relate to who, mood and atmosphere relate to how things are being said, and topics relate to what is being said and why. Then the following one is skill. So in skills training, as we noted earlier, a certain level of linguistic proficiency is required. In order to handle listening comprehension, um, this includes a minimal level of mastery of the features of the sound system, but also of the grammatical system. Um, this is to say that, or actually, we refer to the sentence level, and of course, discourse. Some of the features that need to be practiced are, uh, for example, discriminating between similar sounds, uh, coping with a processing fast pitch, processing stress, and international differences, uh, processing the meaning of different discord markers, and uh, finally, we can talk about <clears throat> understanding communicative function and the non-one-to-one -one equivalence between form and function. Then in the following slide, um, now uh, we're going, well, actually, I'm going to talk about pedagogical implications. Um, for example, I was thinking about uh, activities in which teachers should be aware of these things that I have just mentioned. Um, so to create contextualized exercises, um, the teacher should be aware of grammatical complexity, uh, events narrated out of natural time order, or for example, unfamiliar topics, and then last but not but not least, uh, after content. So if the teacher wants to be aware of these aspects, it will be really great for them in order to create really interesting and meaningful exercises, of course, uh, listening exercises. <music> Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. Mayday, Mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? 
Hallo? This is the German Coast Guard. We are thinking, we're thinking. What are you thinking about? Hey, hey, hey.